So let's quickly revisit what we did last time and then we'll continue from there, right? So we were looking at the single source shortest path problem, right? And you've already seen the Jextra's algorithm, right? So then we basically, you know, looked at, okay, what happens in the sparse case? So we realized that in the sparse case, there's a lot of extra work being done. And instead of that, the better way to do it is to maintain a priority queue, right? Instead of trying to update for every vertex, you just want to update for the neighbors of you, right? So that's this line of code here, right? So instead of updating all the vertices, you only update the neighbors of you because it's a sparse graph. So on average, there are only going to be a constant number of neighbors of a vertex. I don't think I made this clear last time, but let me just clarify. The original algorithm is the Jextra's algorithm. Okay, and in this algorithm, essentially, you do the update for all vertices, right? That's what we refer to as the Jextra's algorithm. And the two modifications that we did, one is that we only look at the neighbors of you, and then we realized that, you know, if that's what we're doing and we're trying to save time, then you've got to find the min also in a more efficient way. And we said we'll use priority queues, right? And that is called Johnson's algorithm. So it's a slight variant of the Jextra, right? Update only neighbors and use priority queues. Okay. These are the two main characteristics of Johnson's algorithm. Okay. All right. So then we saw that, you know, even with this, we are not going to get good speed ups, right? So we were trying to look at some new parallelization strategy, right? Which will work better, which doesn't go through N iterations, right? The, the basic problem with the Jextra or Johnson is that, you know, in each iteration, only one vertex is getting settled and that's an issue, right? So unless we, you know, try to settle about P vertices, you're not going to get good speed ups, right? You may not be able to settle P vertices, but try to settle more vertices in every iteration, right? That's the crux. So we looked at this new parallelization strategy and we said we are going to do a 1D distribution of the vertices, right? Into sets V1, V2 to VP. And each processor is going to maintain its own priority queue. Again, some data structures D and D bar. D just refers to the currently known tentative shortest distance. And D bar is the value which is actually there in the priority queue. So every time, you know, we extract a minimum out of the priority queue, that vertex becomes settled. And we believe that that D value is the final D value, right? Whatever D bar I have pulled out of the priority queue on extract min, right? So I go and update D with that, okay? So think of D bar as some temporary value that's floating around in the priority queue. And once a vertex is pulled out of the priority queue, that D bar becomes D, right? Because that's kind of your final value, which is not going to get updated because now this vertex is settled, okay? All right, and any node that is extracted is considered to be settled locally. Now, here's a critical point that this node may get activated again later on, okay? And we are going to discuss that in a while. Then we basically send messages. We prepare messages for all the joint vertices and we send those messages, okay? Similarly, the receiver receives all the messages and on receiving the messages, it basically, checks if it has come across a new shortest distance. If the update that it has just got, it's called the relaxation operation. So if the new relaxation results in a better value of the shortest distance, then it goes and updates the shortest distance. Okay. So let's pick up from there. First, let's try to understand that why is this algorithm any faster, right? So it doesn't do order n iterations. What does it actually do? So we already discussed this, right? What you get out of single source shortest path is a tree, right? So I can always talk about the SSSP tree, the single source shortest path tree, right? Let's just draw an imaginary tree. Suppose that this was my source and you know, this was what the tree looks like, A, B, C, and then D, E, F, G, H maybe, and so on, right? And maybe there's another level G has, I, J, yeah. So just an orbit shortest path tree over some graph that I've drawn, right? So now let's just understand what happens. So you have P0, you have P1, you have P2, right? Let's say you have three processors, okay? And let's say that P0 is the owner of S 
and P1 is the owner of A and P2 is the owner of B and C. Just imagine there is some distribution and this is how the vertices are distributed amongst the processes. Okay. So now what happens in the first iteration? When you start, what happens? Initially, P0 has S in its priority queue. And what do P1 and P2 have? They have nothing. I'm not talking about all the vertices because I'm not going to trace the entire algorithm, right? So I'm just looking at a few vertices. I'll add more if required. Okay. So now what happens in the first iteration? Well, P1, P2 have nothing to do. They try to do the extract main operation and realize that there is nothing to extract, right? But P0, it basically looks at the priority queue and it extracts the min from that, right? So it extracts the vertex S, yeah? And now what does it do with S? It will look at all the neighbors of S. Let me draw a part of the graph, right? So let's say there's an edge from S to A. Obviously there's an edge from S to B and S to C. So S is going to send a relaxation update to A, B, and C, right? That involves communication with P1 and P2. So it's going to send the update for A to P1 and the update for B and C to P2. And it's going to say, these are my shortest distances, right? Maybe this distance is two. So, so P1 realizes that A has not been visited. So it picks up the D value, right? Sets D bar equal to D the tentative distance and inserts it into the priority queue. So now the priority queue of P1 contains the vertex A. Similarly, the priority queue of P2 will contain the vertices B and C, right? It will add these to the priority queue. It will pick up their D values, see that they are infinity, just add them to the priority queue with the new distance that it has received from S. This is going to be a non-infinity distance, right? So maybe one and three or something, okay? All right, so now what happens in the next step? Well, again, I haven't told you where all the other vertices are, but essentially is, let's just try to understand what will P0, P1, P2 do? P0 will look into its own priority queue and pick up the min element. What is in the priority queue of P0 now? There is nothing in the priority queue of P0, right? Why? Because it has extracted S out of the priority queue. So it treats S as settled. There's nothing more to do for us. All right. Let me do one more thing. Let me just change this three to, let me make it 10. Okay. The distance from S to C, let's make it 10. So is this clear? This is the state of the priority queue after the first iteration. Yeah. Now what is P0 going to do? Well, P0 doesn't have anything else to examine. Its priority queue is empty. And so it's going to do nothing. P1 is going to extract min. And what is the min for P1? It is A, it's the only element in the priority queue. So it's going to extract A. And now it's going to explore all the neighbors of A. Yeah. So it's going to prepare messages sent to the respective vertices and so on. Right? So I hope it's clear. What is P2 going to do? So P2 is going to again extract the min. So it's going to look at which is the min. Well, the min is clearly B. So it's going to extract this B out of here, right? And it's going to traverse all the neighbors of B, right? And send a message to them. So I hope this is clear, right? So, so then in the next iteration, what's going to happen? Well, again, I can't tell you what it will look like in the next iteration because it depends on where these vertices are distributed and so on, right? But you get the idea. But in the next iteration, you know, let's say A and B could be going to the same vertex, right? E, suppose E is on P0. Then P0 is going to receive a message from both A and B, from P1 and P2, right? Both of them will try to do a relax operation on E, right? And then basically P0 will realize that the shortest distance is the distance via A, right? Because that's what we have in the SSSP tree and therefore E will become a child of A in the SSSP tree. How many iterations does it require for this process to complete? for this parallel algorithm. How many iterations do we need? So look, we are settling multiple vertices in every iteration, right? So let's suppose that every vertex is on a separate processor. So let's assume P is equal to N, right? Just to analyze. If P is equal to N, how long would this algorithm take? How many iterations would it take? Height of this tree. Depth of this tree, right? Yeah. Why? Because let's just look at the SSSP tree. So there is an edge from S to A, B, and C, right? So in the first iteration, S is going to send a message and basically all these vertices 
in the first iteration, they are going to receive messages from S, which happens to be the shortest path, right? So in the first iteration, all of these are going to get settled. Yeah. In the second iteration, now all these vertices, right? At depth two in the SSSP tree, they are going to get settled, right? Why? Because now they would have got their shortest distance because A knows its shortest distance. So when A does a relaxation to D and D, the distance that it sends to D and D will be the shortest distance to D and D respectively, right? Which means that, you know, they will update their D values, the shortest distance value, and they're done. They are settled, right? And they will never get activated again. Okay, is that clear? So this way, I mean, you keep on proceeding and finally, you know, whatever is the depth of this tree, right? Number of iterations will be equal to the depth of this tree, all right? So that's basically the parallelism we're looking for, right? If the graph doesn't have a very large diameter, right? So when will this go bad? This will go bad if your graph is like a straight line graph, right? Then you're not going to get much out of this, right? Obviously, then you're going to have to do n iterations. There's no other way, okay? So that's an extreme case, right? So it's of theoretical interest to understand what happens for a linear graph, but practically you don't get linear graphs. So, so that's what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to achieve the parallelism that, you know, all the vertices in the same iteration get covered together in parallel by the different processors, right? Theoretically, we can employ P equal to N processors, but practically you don't do that. And P is much smaller than N, but still we are trying to achieve that parallelism, right? So you'll get some parallelism, but hopefully better than sequential, right? That's the idea. In the parallel world, also things don't move at the rate of, you know, how many nodes there are at a particular iteration because multiple of these nodes are on the same processor, right? So for instance, B and C are on the same processor, they, although they're covered in the first iteration, but they're not going to get settled together, right? You're going to have to settle them one by one. So first you settle B, then you settle C and so on, right? So your number of iterations will not be equal to the diameter when you don't have N processors, but less than that. but Still, you are doing work in parallel across P processes, so you should be able to get good speed up in practice. Suppose P2 settles a vertex. It may get activated again because you're not doing a single extractment across all the processes, right? It's not a global extractment, it's a local extractment. Actually, the correctness of Johnson's is based on looking at the min vertex, the vertex with the minimum shortest distance in the next iteration, picking that up and just relaxing that only, settling that only, right? So now we are not doing that. We are actually trying to settle around P vertices together, right? So it does not guarantee that all of these are, you know, in the shortest path. One out of these definitely will be, that's the one with the shortest distance, but the other ones may not be. Let's quickly try to see how that may happen in such a graph, right? So let me try to see if I can construct this in this graph. So let's say that I have an edge from C to J. This is not in the single source shortest path. Suppose in the actual graph, I have an edge from C to J. And let's say that it has a very high value, maybe 100, right? But I know that the SSSP is telling me there's an edge from B to G and then an edge from G to J, and this has much shorter distance, right? Yeah, okay, is this graph clear? So now what happens in this case? Okay, let me make one more modification, right? Let's say that B and C are not together on the same processor, right? So let's say C is on processor P10 or something, right? Some other processor, right? Let's say that there is a processor P10, which only has C and J, right? These are the vertices allocated to it. Let's look at this as a separate run. P10 just has C and J. In the first iteration, this is empty. In the second iteration, C gets added. That's zeroth iteration, this is the first iteration. Yeah, C gets added. In the next iteration, it's going to extract C and it's going to send a message to all the neighbors. So J is a neighbor of C. Okay, let's assume J is local. So what's going to happen? J is going to get added over here. C is settled and j gets added to the priority queue yeah is that clear yeah i'm calling this the first iteration this is the second iteration now what happened in the third iteration 
let's say that BFG reside on another processor, right? P8 has B, F, and G. So in the first step, there is nothing here. In the first iteration, you get B. So it extracts B. And then what does it add to the neighborhood of B? F and G. Okay. And now in the third iteration, what is P8 going to do? Well, it's going to extract the min. And let's say the min is F, right? So it extracts F. And it goes and explores the neighborhood of F, right? And what does P10 do in the meanwhile? P10 extracts J and explores the neighborhood of J. But now what has it done? When it extracts J, it settles J. Yeah, is that clear? J is settled now. That's the current view. So P10 believes that J is settled. Then in the next iteration, let's say nothing new gets added over here. So in the next iteration, this is going to extract G. When it extracts G, it realizes that this neighborhood of G includes J. So it sends a message to P10, right? That J, this is the distance. Now, what does P10 do? P10 thought that J is already settled, right? So when it pulled it out of the priority queue, it basically updated its D value, right? The shortest distance and it settled it. It, it assumed that this is the final value, but now it has got a new value. Yeah, it has got a new value. And in this case, it happens to be a shorter value. It is just at a distance of four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Instead of 110, it's at a much shorter distance. That means that this node J has got activated again. Is that point clear? So J gets activated again. And what does that mean? This processor is again going to insert it back into the priority queue. And make its D bar equal to the new distance it has received. Make it equal to that and put it back into the priority queue. Putting it back into the priority queue means that it has to again go and inform the neighbors of J. Yeah, is that clear? Because earlier it had some shortest distance of J. Based on that, it had communicated to all its neighbors that look, this is the shortest distance to J. So do the relaxation on these neighbors, right? But now it has received a new shorter distance for J because of which you know it has got activated again. So it again needs to go and inform its neighbors. Is that clear? So that's why it needs to be inserted into the priority queue again. And you know, next time when it gets pulled out of the priority queue, again, it will go and inform all its neighbors. All if right. So I hope it's by, uh, P8 was greater than the distance that uh, P10 settled it was, then we don't have to insert it back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the new distance that you get is more than the previous distance, then you don't have to do anything, right? Then you just drop that and forget about it. Right, so this only happens if you get a shorter distance, if you've discovered a shorter path, right?